I came from a very interesting background. Her father was West Indian, and her mother was Africa from the Gold Coast. Um, I say interesting because my grandfather, George James Christian, came from Dominica in the Eastern Caribbean and went to study law in the UK at Gray's Inn in 1898. He uh, attended the first Pan-African Congress in London, 1900. And I think he was inspired by that and Pan-Africanism to come and uh, seek his fate in the Gold Coast. So he arrived in the Gold Coast in 1902, where he had a very successful career in law, as well as in politics. Now, interestingly, although he did not come from the Gold Coast, he represented the people of the Western Province in the Legislative Council for 10 years, from 1930 to 1940. He educated the majority of his children in the UK, and he had quite a number because he had a family in the West Indies before he came to the Gold Coast. And uh, my mother was born in 1922, and she was sent to school in England in 1927 at the age of five. When she left the Gold Coast, she did not speak English. And when she returned to the Gold Coast in 1947, she had lost her mother tongue. Her mother did not see her for the duration of that period from 1927 to uh, 1947. However, she saw her father frequently because he would visit the UK in connection with his legal work and also uh, his business. He was a businessman as well as being a politician. In 1940, my mother had to decide on what career path she was going to follow. So she was very much influenced by her father, as well as by her older brother, Howard, and decided to become a lawyer. So in 1942, she entered Gray's Inn to study to become a barrister. And uh, she qualified as a barrister in 1945. Now, she got married in December 1944 to my father, who was also a pioneer. He was the first African psychiatrist south of the Sahara and came from the Gambia. Um, in 1947, they decided to uh, settle in the Gambia and they lived in the Gambia from 1947 to 1951 when they came to Ghana. They came to Ghana uh, mainly actually because my father was invited by the Gopu's administration to um, come and practice psychiatry in the Gold Coast. And um, as such, um, they relocated and that began my mother's uh, legal career in the Gold Coast in 1951, although she had been called to the bar in 1947. She worked briefly as a registrar of companies uh, before she joined um, Noble Oil Corporation in 1957 where, again, she was a pioneer. She set a precedent for um, lawyers being engaged by corporations um, to head their legal departments rather than the use of um, private practitioners. And she worked for Mobile Oil Ghana Limited for 25 years, from 1957 to 1982. She was a very well-rounded person. And apart from her professional life, she was engaged in all sorts of other um, public service activities about which I'll be saying more later. Uh, not only was my mother the first woman lawyer in the Gold Coast in 1947, but actually she was the third woman lawyer at the time in West Africa. And at the time of her death in 1998, she was the most senior lawyer at the Ghana Bar. So my mother, apart from being a trailblazer, as a pioneer and the first woman lawyer in the Gold Coast at the time. She had a lot of accomplishments to her credit. She was very, very keen on public service. And when I say public service, I mean to the country as well as um, voluntary service. As regards her uh, public service to the country, one time she served on the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation Board 
and she was also the chairperson of the Nurses and Lib Blueprint Council. As regards her voluntary work, she was very, very active in FIDA, that is uh, the Women Lawyers Association with the Spanish name. And in that connection, she was instrumental in the enactment of two critical laws um, in the 1980s. Uh, these are the um, Interstate Succession Decree and the Head of Family Accountability Law. These were very, very important social policy laws that improved the uh, welfare of widows who had hitherto customarily been treated rather uh, badly. She was also involved in the YWCA and was also very much engaged in the Girl Guides Association. And apart from that, she was uh, a member of the Rich Church, um, uh, Rich Church. And in that connection, she was the secretary for the Rich Church Sunday School for about 25 years. Um, and so she had a very full life. But as far as her profession was concerned, she set the pace for the engagement of lawyers by corporations. And in that capacity, she was employed by Mobile Oil, Ghana Limited, uh, uh, and worked with Mobile Oil from 1957 to 1982 for a period of 25 years. And that was a precedent that set the pace for lawyers being engaged by corporations to attend to the legal affairs rather than lawyers being retained on retainer, private practitioners being retained on retainer. Yeah, so she opened the way for um, women in corporate Ghana. Well, it meant that I had a ready-made mentor, and my mother very much led by example. And uh, I wanted to be just like her. I wanted to be just like her. However, I have to say that she was not somebody who cared about elegant dressing or domestic work. She, she was not a good cook, but she managed her household, and she made sure that everything in the house ran smoothly um, but most importantly what I learned from my mother was her patriotism I remember her sitting in the chair one day and just saying I love my God and I, I even remember her thinking about uh, a political career at one time that was during the first republic under President Kwame Nkrumah so she, she, she was just a fantastic example fantastic example and I aspire to be like her. It was very much a matter of uh, family tradition I would say in the first instance. I was inspired by my mother and I wanted to be just like her and uh, I recall um, a conversation I had with the principal of my school. I was in a boarding school in the UK when I told her I wanted to be a lawyer. She thought I was joking and she actually even asked me whether my mother was really a lawyer. So that spurred me on even more, and uh, I was determined to follow in my mother's footsteps and become a barrister, a member of Grey's Inn like her, and a third generation lawyer. And fortunately, I was able to achieve the targets I set for myself, and I, I have had a very successful and fulfilling career in legislative drafting, uh, working for the government of Ghana, and now working as a legislative drafting consultant. First of all, uh, as a trailblazer, and then secondly, as a, a wonderful mentor, not just to me, but to others. And uh, thirdly, as an inspiration, because she inspired women lawyers in Ghana. But not only did she inspire women lawyers in this country, but she also inspired women lawyers in Lesotho, in Southern Africa. I lived there for five and a half years, and uh, she came to visit me. When I arrived, there were only six women lawyers in the country. And when I left five years later, there were 25. And I know that she was an inspiration to the women lawyers she met on that occasion.